It was recently announced that the lifespan of the 3DS is coming to an end. You'll no longer be able to make purchases on the 3DS eShop by March of 2023, and the closeout's coming in waves starting in May. So I'm going to go ahead and make a video highlighting a checklist you might want to run through before the 3DS eShop closes since you won't have it for long. This video is really going to be for those of you who like the 3DS and its library, maybe aren't into emulation, and want to be able to play games that may go unplayable in a legal format forever after 2023. We're going to start with some freebies you can get, and then move on to my recommendations for what to buy before the eShop closes forever. I am a hardcore collector, so this list is long. This list is basically anything I found of any gameplay value on the 3DS or Wii U eShops. This checklist is based off the North America 3DS eShop since I'm in America. Now don't panic buy or make rash decisions since you have some time left, and the list of actual exclusives to the eShop is limited. And another thing, do you have a My Nintendo account and a Nintendo Switch? Most non-DLC purchases on the eShop can get you gold points on your My Nintendo account to spend on the Switch eShop, but only if they're properly linked. I didn't realize my accounts were not all properly linked before I made the bulk of my purchases, so I definitely missed out on some big cash, but you can still earn some points to use towards Switch purchases. So I'm gonna go in order of what I believe is important. Even if you don't have a huge budget for gaming, there are plenty of freebies you can get as long as you have a 3DS, a memory card, and an internet connection. One thing to note before I dive into the freebies that are being offered is that you will want to upgrade your memory with an SD or micro SD card if you haven't already. The 3DS internal memory is piddling, and even the freebies will warrant more than a 16GB card if you want them all. While some sources give the official supported maximum as a 64GB card, you can actually use a 128GB card like I do, as long as you format it first. If you really want to experience the 3DS's digital library the intended way, or are a big game collector, I suggest investing in a decent sized card. One other thing to note is, while you can get SD cards to raise overall storage, DSiWare is limited to only being executable from your completely limited system memory. You can still back up the game's files to an SD card so you'll never lose them even when offline, but it basically boils down to only having a set number of DSi games playable at a given time without swapping them out in an SD storage, thereby losing their save file. This really hurts RPGs and high score based games, but there's not much you can do without homebrew or jailbreaking, and you can still technically play any DSi game at any given time, you'll just lose save data when you swap them back and forth between memories. I broke the list of freebies down into categories. Single player, multiplayer, either, tools, trailers, and themes, and we're going to tackle single player games first. If you like Pokemon, you're in luck. There are six Pokemon freebies, and I'll start with my favorite, Pokemon Shuffle. While this one, Picross, and Rumble World are free to play with in-app purchases, they really are playable for free, which is what we're going to have to deal with once payments go offline. This is especially so for Pokemon Shuffle, which I've been playing since it came out many years ago. I can't remember ever spending money on it, and there are numerous guides to catching and training top-tier competitive teams floating around. I do say competitive in quotes since the competitions are for high scores, but you'll also want guides for the single-player content. Especially for puzzle lovers, I recommend this one. Despite being another puzzle game, Pokemon Picross is a different story. While both have their similar elements of waiting to play unless you pay, Picross is a little less exciting and has less overall content than Shuffle in my opinion. I do like Picross, and I do like this game overall, but I'd say Shuffle is more of a priority if you're struggling with block space. Still, it's free, and you can get the same feel of catching Pokemon that you get from other games, to a smaller degree of course. Now if you want more action-oriented gameplay as well as that catching and collecting kind of feeling, Pokemon Rumble World's a great free-to-play game which features actual Pokemon battles in real time. This one has good content even for free. Do be sure to check out Rumble U on the Wii U, which is exclusive to its eShop and uses these proto-amiibo figures. That brings us to the Pokemon Special Demos. Detective Pikachu, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and Sun and Moon. I never played Detective Pikachu, but there is a special free demo version of it on the eShop that takes you through some of the basic gameplay you can expect in the game. Unlike other demos, the demos I'm listing here can be used infinitely with no restrictions like the non-special demos with limited times to use them. Maybe you only get a little content out of this detective demo, but you can always revisit it later, a special property among these 3DS demos. Likewise, there are two semi-legitimate Pokemon experiences in special demo form. The Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire demo and the Sun and Moon demo, which similarly have you playing some small missions in their regions and enact real Pokemon battles, you can gain experience, and you can even send special Pokemon or other gifts to the full game version. Nothing spectacular of course, but an unlimited use demo that lets you experience Pokemon and can interact with their full counterparts is worth downloading if you can stomach their high storage usage. 
That's it for the Pokemon content among the freebies, but they're all worth trying out, at least since they won't be obtainable after March 2023 if you haven't downloaded them once before. I'll briefly go into the other single-player special demos now. The Puzzle Dragons plus Mario Bros. demo version is another puzzler with some RPG elements. I never bought the full game, but this one is more free and limited use puzzle gameplay for those wanting a free way to spend their time. If you liked the RPG entries listed so far, then you should try the Bravely Second demo and the Monster Hunter Stories demo for a good amount of content in a fantasy RPG setting. I believe the Monster Hunter demo can transfer progress over to the full version as well in case you get hooked. WarioWare is especially fun for small bites of time, which makes the WarioWare Gold special demo entertaining for much longer. That's it for the single-player demos, but there's more single-player free content in the next few apps. Now we're going to talk about Stretchmo and Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Both of these games have one thing in common, which is that they come with a little playable demo, again, unlimited use, but encourage purchasing gameplay packs in different ways. For Stretchmo, you can purchase a few different worlds, each with puzzles to overcome. Stretchmo and the rest of the games in the series are all entertaining and adorable puzzlers, so I paid for all the worlds. If you don't get hooked on the free demo it offers, then maybe delete it to make some space. Similarly, Rusty offers a baseball demo, but you can buy other baseball-oriented games and even get items while playing to try and haggle with them on real money prices. The baseball demo's cute for a moment, but if you like the gameplay, definitely buy Cage Match for challenging hits, Volley Bats for local multiplayer action on a single DS, and Batmaster for crafting custom bats to use in the other games. One of the best things you can download for free is the Nintendo Badge Arcade. I swear this thing is rigged, but it still offers free plays every day to try and obtain special decorations you can use on your home screen, making a house a home. You can definitely obtain most badges with the free plays it gives you, as long as you have more skill than I seem to. Regardless, the ability to decorate your 3DS home screen for free is a must-have, even if this monster takes up so much space, even more than it says up front, kinda like hidden fees when you're buying a car. Another must-have in my opinion is the RPG Maker Player. If you have RPG Maker FES, you can make your own RPG games for the 3DS and upload them online. But who cares, since you can download this for free and play all those uploaded games. Are they all good? No. But there are some good ones and you can filter by rating and popularity and get some free RPGs to spend way more time on than the aforementioned demos. If you enjoy RPGs, or even visual novels and puzzle adventures, you gotta get this one and stockpile up to 16 free games. Now if you have a new Nintendo 3DS XL, you can use Amiibo. Or you can use this adapter if you have a different model. If you can use Amiibo and own at least one Amiibo, then you should download Mini Mario & Friends Amiibo Challenge, another puzzler in the Mario vs Donkey Kong series that uses Amiibos to unlock levels. If you scan compatible Amiibos, you can get great content out of this one. This one's also available on Wii U, so if you want to save space on your 3DS, you can just get it on Wii U instead. And if all that appeals to you, then also check out Amiibo Tap on the Wii U as well for similar content. Lastly on the strictly single player list is Miitopia Casting Call, which is less of a game and more of a little interactive comedy demo. Funny and worth having if you have oodles of space on your card, but definitely not a priority for regular gamers. Alright, now for those of you who care about multiplayer or may own multiple 3DSs, these games are focused on multiplayer and use local multiplayer so they can be used indefinitely and offline. First up is the Zelda Triforce Heroes Special Demo. Now this one only has one playable level in this demo version, but if you have friends with 3DSs, it's fun to mess around as three links for a while. However, the priority member of this smaller list is Metroid Prime Blast Ball, which feels more like a full game, since it's more of its own game meant to spread the word about Federation Force. This can be played 3v3, or you can have bots fill in if you and only one friend are playing. Think of a smaller and somewhat clunkier Rocket League, with mechs firing energy beams at the ball to make goals or destroy opponents. You can even unlock skins! Worth having if you have a friend with a 3DS since this kind of gameplay has replay appeal. This next one is a little less important, but still pretty valid. Mario Party Star Rush is an underrated Mario Party game, and if a friend has one copy, you can use this app to join in a multiplayer game. Useful if you and a sibling have only one copy between you so that you can still play as long as you both have 3DSs. It also comes with one minigame you can play right out the gate for practice, and you can actually level up your profile and transfer that save data over if you do get the full game. Now for the list I call Either, which contains games I felt could be played alone or with friends in meaningful ways. I'll start with Monster Hunter 4 and Monster Hunter Generations, which have a few levels each you can adventure and fight monsters in, either alone or with friends. They each have much more content than the Zelda experience since that was focused on a limited time online service and supports four players instead of just three. 
Another free-to-play game with in-app purchases is Team Kirby Clash Deluxe, which has fighting gameplay from the Kirby Clash title mixed with some light RPG elements, and multiplayer mode for cooperative missions. Nothing crazy when compared to a lot of other MMOs, but it has single-player gameplay and cooperative gameplay with gear to collect and challenging bosses to take on. Lots of content here if you're willing. If space isn't an issue, then you should also try the Kirby Battle Royale special demo. After playing a short story demo, you can play a few single-player and multiplayer challenges each day, and even unlock a new game type and new ability, and then send points to the full version if you get it. Then there are two games which use the Rusty and Stretch Mode model. Ironfall Invasion offers a free demo mode which has a single-player mission and a limited multiplayer mode. You can buy the unlocked content for 20 bucks, but I say don't bother. The single-player mission isn't anything to shake a stick at, but if you and friends want an over-the-shoulder shooter for local multiplayer, you can have six players duke it out with the machine guns and grenade launchers. If you have a new Nintendo 3DS XL, you can even use the C-Stick for a pseudo dual stick experience. Definitely worth downloading if you know some people who like Gears of War light on 3DS. Similarly, Steel Diver Sub Wars, the sequel to Steel Diver, has a similar premise, where you have shooting-based gameplay that can be played with local multiplayer groups. You can purchase the unlocked content for only 10 bucks and even buy some extra submarines from a separate shop if you just want some extra content. But even just for free, you get two single-player missions and a great time in multiplayer. I put two more apps on this list as either, but they're less games and more of a replacement for PictoChat on the old DS system. SwapNote and SwapDoodle are these drawing applications that can be used to exchange notes with others. Or at least SwapNote used to be. Now it just saved any notes you had from before the service went down in favor of SwapDoodle. You can still use it like a drawing tool and save your notes though, so I kept it. Swap Doodle is the newer and still functioning form with a free starter pack for extra note save slots and some other extras available. In Swap Doodle, you can still send notes to others and there are purchasable packs of different lessons and tools, some based on Nintendo properties. Not a priority by any means since fewer and fewer people will use these apps and other features like Spot Pass and Street Pass, but worth having if you have tons of empty space. Now the less fun stuff, tools. These are utility apps that serve some minor functions. The Monster Hunter 3 tool is mostly used to move save data between the 3DS and Wii U versions of the game. Similarly, the Monster Hunter Generations tool can move data to the Switch version from the 3DS. The Save Data Transfer tool is for moving save data from a physical version of a game to a digital version of the same game. Don't sweat these ones too much unless you own a Monster Hunter game or have both a digital and a physical version of another game. However, if you care about Pokemon, you will need to download the Pokemon Bank and Transporter apps. These tools are going to eventually be made free to use and are how you house and transfer Pokemon from generations 3 up through 7 and then move them to Pokemon Home, so they're must-haves if you own any of those generations. Furthermore, if you have the Virtual Console version of Generation 1 or 2 games on your 3DS, this is used for their transfers as well. You can download the Poke Transporter app from within the Pokemon Home app itself. Now the least useful of all of these isn't really a tool, I just put it here since it's not really a game per se. It's Photos with Mario, an AR card app that lets you take photos of Mario characters in different locations as long as you have the right cards. It's basically useless unless you have one of the compatible cards, but it is free and maybe you'll get a pack in the future off eBay, only worth having if you can spare the space. That's all for applications, but there are a few trailers that are free. Definitely only look at these if you have tons of space, i.e. a 128GB card or something like that. You can download the trailers for Kid Icarus Uprising, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Zelda A Link Between Worlds, and Metroid Samus Returns. You can also download a video with some clips relating to Halloween-themed levels in gaming. These are just videos, but cool and or cute things to look back on, especially since some of the footage shows previous builds of the game with different graphics. Not a priority by any means, but I like preserving these things for some reason. And finally, for the freebies, are the themes. There are several 3DS themes that you can still get for free, most of them listed in a free section in the theme shop. However, I found one bundle of themes that was free but listed instead in the game-specific section, the Gurumin themes. I'll touch on Gurumin later, but it's an adorable game and the themes appear to be free for everyone. I thought at first it was because I had Gurumin 3D purchased, but I do have some spare 3DSs with different accounts on them and it was free on each of them too, so you should check it out. The other free themes are neat, too, more interesting than basic colors in my opinion. And while you're here, buy any other themes you would want to since it won't be possible down the road. I want to mention one more thing before I go into my recommended picks for the eShop. These are not immediately going away, but for those of you who have the space, you should consider downloading updates to popular games that you may get down the line, or games that you have now. These can be found by filtering the search and putting the max price at zero. Some of these updates improve stability or fix glitches, and one day they may go away but no pressure since they're not in any immediate danger. Just something to think about. 
Oh, and I wanted to mention two other little free things that you can get if you haven't already. In the Street Pass Me Plaza, you can get one of two free games, a stock market game and a slot car racing game, but I assume most of you have already as long as you've been using the Street Pass Me Plaza. And another freebie you can get as long as you have a My Nintendo account, Flipnote Studio 3D, which is a successor to the Flipnote Studio on DSi. Okay, now for a rapid fire of the games that I want to recommend. I'm just going to give brief descriptions or even just put up a second of gameplay so that you can know whether or not you want to look into that particular game. Let's start with the list I'm going to call Priority Games in no particular order. And I have purchased most of, if not all, of the following titles on some system. This is just how I spend my paycheck. Not all games I list will technically be eShop exclusives, but many of the games on this list will either be difficult or impossible to legally play otherwise, especially the DSiWare titles. First off is Photo Dojo. Do you like fighting games or beat-em-ups? This is either with local multiplayer off of 1DS, and you can be the fighter. While not a very deep game, it is a really fun one I've been playing since I was younger. Next is Game & Watch Donkey Kong Jr. Actually, the whole library of Game & Watch is recommended, but if you have to pick just one, I like Donkey Kong Jr. the best. Dragon Quest Wars. Fans of strategy games need this one. It's got local multiplayer on a single DS, and features adorable Dragon Quest characters and a decently smart AI. Soul of Darkness is a pretty well-made Castlevania clone that utilizes camera functions and actually made a younger, edgier me cry with its ending. If you like Castlevania, you could do worse. Pokemon Battle Troze is for puzzle fans who wanted more than Pokemon Shuffle, and perhaps like the original Troze game. This one does have Nintendo polish. If you like the camera functionality of Face Raiders, Pokemon Dream Radar is a fun way to scratch that itch and give rewards to the Gen 5 games at the same time. I always champion side games that interact with the main series. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend the entire Level 5 eShop exclusive lineup, but the best are definitely Crimson Shroud, Attack of the Friday Monsters, and Liberation Maiden, as I'm sure you've seen in the other eShop videos. There's a reason these are on everyone's lists. Pocket Card Jockey is also on everyone's list for the eShop grabs. This game has the Game Freak touch for sure. If you're a retro fan, you'll be looking at the virtual console games, and you should. While not really exclusive to the 3DS, they may be easier for you to play here. That goes doubly for the Mysterious Murasame Castle, which is a Japan-only title. This is pretty much the only way a Westerner can play this game without emulation, and it's very good for an early Famicom game. Similarly, check out Earthbound Beginnings, which was a Famicom game released with an English patch here on the Wii U. Also on Wii U is Kudu Kudu Kududin, a game that never came to the US when it was on GBA, but now it's here on Wii U, and it's a great mix of puzzle, time attack, and physics. Also check out Sin and Punishment on Wii U, since that's another game the US didn't get, and instead we only got its sequel on Wii. I always thought this next one was related somehow to Murasame, but it's just another Nintendo Samurai game. Sakura Samurai is a very artful game that makes really good use of the 3D effect. If you like Street Pass, you need to check out the Mii Plaza games. I went ahead and got them all, but at least for your free game, get Slot Car Racing. I would also recommend Mii Force and Monster Manor the most from the others, though I do think they all offer a fun experience with interactions from other players if you can get a Street Pass. Also take a look at the premium paid update for Street Pass Plaza, which adds a few small features. The next one you might skip since there are other games in the series with very similar gameplay, but I do adore the Yumi series, especially Yumi's Odd Odyssey, a puzzle platformer on 3DS. Maybe skip it if you have its sequel on Switch. This DSiWare exclusive is a mix of stealth and puzzle gameplay, a clever game called SKP Go. I've been playing this one since I was younger, and it has a little storyline about an amnesiac who's pursued by assailants and challenging gameplay along with it. Another one I grew up with, Elemental Masters, is one of those TCG role-playing games set in a fantasy world. Kind of similar to Puzzle Quest in the setup, but the gameplay is more like a side card game from a regular RPG, like the one in Final Fantasy VIII or the Digimon TCG in Digimon World 3 or Pazak. I'm currently having a lot of fun playing Chibi Robo Photo Finder. Now, I never had or played the original Chibi Robo, but I did play Park Patrol on DS and thought it was fun, and this one scratches that similar itch. Consider getting Inazuma 11, a soccer RPG game that does not get many releases in the US, though if you're in the JP or PAL regions, there were many released in the series. I love when RPG elements and stories get mixed with non-traditional setups like sports or random careers. Take a look at the other members of the Pushmo series, like Pushmo and Crashmo, if you like Stretchmo enough to buy the level packs, that is. Also check out Pushmo World on Wii U. I'm addicted to them all right now. Also, if you do care about Pokemon, then grab the Game Boy and Game Boy Color Virtual Console versions, since they have connectivity with the other games, as I mentioned before. 
Long story short, this is the only legit way to transfer Gen 1 and Gen 2 originating Pokémon up to the new games. It's also one of the only legit ways to shiny hunt Celebi since Crystal comes with the special Celebi event preloaded. If you like the Blaze Blue series, consider the DSiWare game Blaze Blue or the 3DS game Blaze Blue Clone Phantasma. Neither is amazing, but still decent side games for lovers of the Blaze Blue story or already own a game like X Blaze Code Embryo on PS3 for the story. And go ahead and look at Pro Jumper and Radio Hammer while you're on the Arxis and Axis pages in the eShop. Birds and Beans and Paper Airplane Chase are WarioWare micro games for sure, emphasis on micro, but both have addicting high score based gameplay. Birds and Beans has an unlockable second mode, and Airplane Chase has single DS multiplayer mode. A similar title, Spotto has simple gameplay, but physics based games are always a treat. If you own or care about Smash Bros on Wii U, you can get this cheap app to use your 3DS as a controller for the Wii U version. Touch Battle, Tank, Tag, Combat, and Tank Troopers are the two better tank-based games I've found. Though, Tanks vs. Ants looks decent. If you only get one, I recommend Tank Troopers, since Touch Battle, Tank, Tag, Combat, that is a mouthful, needs a second copy to play multiplayer, while Tank Troopers can use download play. 80s Overdrive is a classic retro racer that reminds me of Victory Run or Final Lap Twin, and you guys know I love Final Lap Twin. It does lack an open world to explore like Final Lap Twin, but the racing feels nice and the upgrade system helps with that RPG feel. Another similar title is Gotcha Racing, which has a similar mechanic, but a vastly different cutesier art style. Take your pick, they're both fun to play. There are three Kirby games that are kind of leaving with the eShop. Kirby Fighters Deluxe, DDD's Drum Dash Deluxe, and Kirby's Blowout Blast. All this alliteration. These are expansions upon minigames from the mainline titles, and are all fun. I do like the multiplayer fighting aspect of Fighters Deluxe, but the gameplay gets reused in the free-to-play Team Kirby Clash, as mentioned before. Blowout Blast is a well-made 3D platforming action game, and DDD's Drum Dash is a rhythm game that somehow reminds me of some of the bonus stages in Clonoa on GBA. All are worth getting in my opinion, since they have that Nintendo polish. This is the part of the video where I realized it was going to take way too long to capture all of the 3DS footage manually like I've been doing, and I wasn't experienced enough to edit it all together and keystone it correctly. So from here on out, we're mostly going to be looking at the 3DS eShop listings and other very small clips, and I might have to cut some things down. But we're going to get all the names out there of the games that I think are important. Another rhythm platformer everyone's talking about is Harmonite, which I personally think may be a little overhyped, but I still think it's a great game, and it's a shame it's going away. Take a look at Maestro Green Grove as well if you have the system storage to spare. There are a lot of good shoot-'em-ups that will be going away. Karis the Beast of Re-Eden is not an amazing game, but is based on a Japan-only shoot-'em-up that we didn't get here, and I love it when games get this import treatment years later. Another game to get a similar import was Rekka, which is an astoundingly hard and fast-paced game. The Turvy Strike Back is a unique game in which you turn the DS upside down to play, and has single DS multiplayer mode. Can you tell yet that I love single DS multiplayer mode as a feature? I really liked Advance Wars back in the day, too. Galaxy Saver is another well-made shoot-'em-up which does have local wireless play, though two copies are needed. Still, single player is worth its price tag. Nano Assault DX is another one I've had for a while, and gives a unique spin on the genre and has good 3DS effects, for those who actually care. Also check out the litany of shoot 'em ups under the GG label. Search for the publisher Good Vision Corporation, as most are well made. Uh, they're pretty cheap, though they lack all the extras modes and pizzazz of some other titles. Still, cheap and fun for most games under this label, and they're not just shoot 'em ups. Also take a look at Kokuga, Chain Blaster, and Steel Empire. And while not really a shoot 'em up, Affordable Space Adventures on the Wii U is a great game with co-op gameplay, flying a ship around dangerous space. Though you can get this next action-adventure title on other systems like the PSP, the 3DS version of Guruman 3D does have a unique feature in the 3D visuals, something which can be said of any game ported here, but Guruman is also a terrific and cheap game which often goes on sale. Fans of puzzle and adventure visual novels should try out the Parascientific Escape series and Cold Case Investigation's Distant Memories. I love 999 on DS, and these help scratch that itch when I'm on the go. For golf lovers, especially those who like golf games with mild RPG elements like I do, look at Fun Fun Mini Golf Touch, as it's cheap and has plenty of unlockable options and upgrades. Also look at Let's Golf 3D and True Swing Golf Express for similar features. Here's an odd one, I don't know how to classify this. Alien on the Run is kind of an action game that has a weird but comical premise with fun gameplay and a pretty cheap cost. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Mario vs Donkey Kong games we're losing. 
I loved the original Mario vs. Donkey Kong on GBA as a kid, and also played a bunch of Donkey Kong 94. Minis March Again features a Lemming-style gameplay and has a level editor adding replay value. Minis on the Move brings the series into a 3D space and has unlockables as well as over 200 stages. Tipping Stars is slightly expensive for this list at 20 bucks, but you get a Wii U copy as well. The aforementioned Amiibo Challenge is part of this series, but like I said, it's free as long as you have an Amiibo that works with it already. One thing to note about Tipping Stars is, unless they patch it before the shop goes down, you can't actually unlock everything in the game. There was an unlock feature in there based on the Miiverse, which is now offline, so you have to pick what you buy in the shop. Kinda sucks, but maybe they'll fix it. Either way, it's still worth grabbing for the single-player content. Now, if you're a fan of puzzle games and Dr. Mario, take a look at Dr. Mario Express for a cheap way to play the original game, or snag Dr. Mario Miracle Cure for extra gameplay modes. And then also check out Dr. Luigi on the Wii U. I never got into this series until now, but the mix of action and tower defense in the Dylan series is interesting. The third game is quite expensive at 40 bucks, but is probably the best of the three. Still, they're all good and gonna be gone forever until further notice. Diehard fans of the WarioWare series should get WarioWare Snapped. This one uses the camera as its sole control scheme, like the Kinect, to mix results. Even though it's short and maybe a tad off kilter, it's truly got the spirit of WarioWare, and like the other titles, even messing up on it's funny. Similarly, Face Pilot is like pilot wings, but with your face as the controls, and probably controls better than the Kinect. Alright, so now I'm going to go into a long list of RPGs. Action RPGs, traditional JRPGs, and everything in between, since there are so many on the eShop, and I just can't stop buying them for some reason. Many of these go on sale frequently, and I'm a sucker for RPGs and would recommend any of these, really. Naturally, you're liable to pick one or two from the list, and you can't go wrong. Okay. Xenonia. Ash. Machine Knight. Infinite Dunamis. Cronus Arc. Alphadia. As Divine Cross. Unlucky Mage. Brave Dungeon, Cristorino, Journey to Crazia, Legna Tactica, The Abyss Quartet, The Witch and Hero series, The X Cave Trilogy, The Legend of Dark Witch series, Demon King Box, Bonds of the Skies, Dragon Sinker, Faerun, Crystal Adventure, Kingdom's Item Shop, Adventure Bar Story, Adventure Labyrinth Story, Symphony of Eternity, Dragon Lapis, Crystal Monsters, Pick Dun 2, The River City series, Weapon Shop de Omase, Absolute Baseball, Ikachan, The Keep, The Denpa Men series. Now I don't regret buying any of these, and I am being completely honest, though I'm a bit of a collecting nut. If a bunch of random names being thrown out at you didn't grab your attention, then at least please look at Weapon Shop de Omase and the Denpa Men games. Weapon Shop de Omase is a comedic rhythm RPG game about being the guy who forges weapons for traditional RPG characters. This one is a funny one to play right after playing one of the traditional JRPGs off this list. The Denpa Men is a great one where you can use the camera to capture little flying green screen technicians and form a dungeon going party. Also I want to mention Unchained Blades here. It is on the PSP, but we all know about the PSP shop, so maybe grab it here since it's a great dungeon crawler in first person with huge battles. Okay, cool. I'm gonna take a break from the RPGs. Here are some other mentions. Xscape is a sequel to a Japan-only shooter which pushed graphical limits back in the day on the Game Boy. This one isn't pushing any limits now, but it reminds me a lot of Red Alarm on the Virtual Boy in like a good way, so you should check it out if you like those. It's also very Star Foxy. Sky Peace is a game about boarding in the sky and getting high scores. It's pretty addicting. Super Strike Beach Volleyball is a cute little volleyball game, and I know that doesn't sound mega interesting, but I swear I love these simple little games as a break in between serious games. The Queen TV Game 2 is a really indescribable game, and with profanity, but for some reason it was only two cents, so yeah, I bought it, and you can too, for two cents. It's basically free. There are some Ace Attorney games that are only on the eShop and on mobile, so unless you want to play those on your phone or wait for the remaster, then get it here. Lionel City Builder 3D is another relaxing game, and it's about trains. Enough said. Pirate Pop Plus is a simple game that reminds me of old LCD games, like the Tiger Electronics games. It's cute, and I think the pirate is the same guy from Runbo, but I could be wrong about that. Conveni Dream and Gourmet Dream are also simple, relaxing, little cute shop management games, and they're always fun to have on the go. Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D is not really exclusive here, but the only other versions of the game I could find were the iOS versions, which only work on the older iPods anyway. 
I did buy it on my old iPod back in the day, and it is a fun one. So yeah, it may as well be exclusive to the eShop, and this version does have 3D capabilities anyway. Not so many shooters on 3DS, but if Ironfall's demo was enough for you, then you're probably fine without it. The Electroplankton series is a weird one, but they're exclusive here and all pretty cheap. At least get Hannenbau since they made this one into a Smash Bros. stage. The Mighty series has a couple games exclusive here, like Mighty Milky Way and Mighty Flip Champs. All of them are quality platformers. Ancient Tribe is another cute little game that reminds me of uh, Populous, if anyone remembers that one. Amoeb Battle is a different vibe, but also checks off the RTS-style gameplay. Moki Moki is a simple party game, but also has download play, so that makes it worth it to me and my extra DS's. Fighting slash beat em up Cosmo Fighters also checks this box, and I love fighting games where only one copy is needed, like most fighting games on console. Man, more stuff should have been download play. Mononoke Forest has a similar aesthetic feel to Moke Moke, but their gameplay is completely different. Very cute, though. The Spirit Hunters duo are like the Deadpaw men, but if you like creatures better than weird men, then look at these ones. After Zoom is a similar concept, but the art's probably somewhere between Spirit Hunters quality and Denpah Men quality, which I didn't really like the Spirit Hunters creatures personally. Animal Puzzle Adventure actually got my attention for having a unique puzzle style. Another great puzzler is Banana Bliss Jungle Puzzles, which has you competing with your previous times and looking for hidden bonuses while trying to math out some platforming puzzles. Zombie Panic in Wonderland DX is a deluxe version of a WiiWare title. So if you're feeling salty that you missed some of the stuff on the last Nintendo shop's death, you can save this one on the second go-around. A comical shooter that reminds me of Wild Guns and has good music. Another zombie game I like is Undead Storm Nightmare, which is a top-down shooter with download co-op. I love these kinds of games now more than ever. You should also check out Zombie Incident, and while you're on the Colavier publisher page, look at Words Up Academy, Monster Combined Tower Defense, Comic Workshop 2, and their aquarium games Deep Sea Creatures and My Aquarium Seven Oceans. This publisher has a lot of cute games, which I'm kind of a sucker for. Puzzle Labyrinth is a great first-person puzzler. Dot Eater's another first-person style game, but instead of puzzles, you basically become a first-person time-traveling Pac-Man. Other puzzlers I want to mention are Snap Dots, Spin Six, Number Battle, Trajectile, Quetzal's Corridors, and Lincoln Launch. The Virtual Console version of Super Mario Bros. Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, contains the e-reader DLC that never got released here otherwise, so if you like Mario, you should check it out. You may also want to check out Pokedex 3D Pro if you're a die-hard Pokemon fan, though it's a little pricey for what it is. It does have some quiz games to check your knowledge. And to wrap it up, here's a rapid fire of some smaller titles I still want people to check out before they fade into the past and obscurity. A Kappa's Trail. Looks Lee. Clash of Elementalists, Rhythm Heaven Megamix, Groove Heaven, The Usagi Duo, The Lost Town Duo, Sadame, Castle of Magic, Arrow Porter, Starship Damray, Gata Protectors, Defense of the Middle Kingdom, Dairojo Samurai Defense, Kronos Twins, Petit Novel Harvest December, Swords and Darkness, Grincia, Creeping Terror, The Silver Falls games, which are apparently getting new releases soon, Fragrant Story, in case you didn't get a physical copy recently, Hazumi, Butterfly, Inchworm Animation 2, Amida's Path, Space Lift, Danger Panic, Color Zen and Color Zen Kids, BitBoy Arcade and Puzzle Box Setup. Dress to Play Magic Bubbles. Escape Vector. Fluidity Spin Cycle. Crazy Construction. Cube Tactics. Pyramids. Ambition of the Slimes. Drancia Saga. Alchemic Dungeons. Jet Rocket 2. Siesta Fiesta. Bomb Monkey. Tokyo Crash Mobs. Art of Balance Touch. Gangstar 2. Flipper 2. Zoo Frenzy. Candle Root. Wizard Defenders Flip the Core Flame Tail 
Metal Torrent. Penguin Patrol. Aura Aura Climber. Smile Basic. Kersploosh. And Castle Conqueror Heroes. And that was the end of the list of specific titles. Whew. You should also check out specific publishers that you care about and see if anything strikes your fancy. Also check out the Virtual Consoles and 3D Classics, as well as the GG series for short, cheap arcade action. And finally, check for DLC. If you care about any DLC, such as the Fire Emblem DLC, get it while you can. I'll list some of the popular games that have DLC that you can buy. Fire Emblem Awakening. Fire Emblem Fates. That's the kicker right there, unless you have the expensive special edition. And Fire Emblem Echoes. Senron Kagura 2. It has an extra playable character you can buy. The Monster Hunter games. They all have free little updates and extras. Persona Q. Super Smash Bros. Get all the characters. Theatrhythm. You can get some songs that you really should have gotten with the base game for the same price as an actual iTunes song. The Shin Megami Tensei games. Bravely Default. Mario Golf World Tour. Fantasy Life. The Harvest Moon series. The Etrian Odyssey series. Cold Sept Revolt. RPG Maker FES. You can get some extra resources to build with. Hyrule Warriors Legends. And Seventh Dragon 3, Code VFD. All right, awesome. That's my huge, way too long checklist for the eShop before it closes. I know it was a long video, but you have to be thorough and complete when something like the finality of a closing bank of games happens. Thanks for watching, and I hope something on this litany of things educated you or helped inform you on what you want to get before it closes. If you have any comments or questions, I will definitely be in the comments on this one since this is my biggest project and my first scripted video on the channel, and want feedback and to hear your picks in case I missed a big one. I'd be excited to hear about another one I can get before it's gone, so please share. Also, I want to mention that a lot of these games do go on sale, so maybe stock up on your credit and then wait until the last possible moment and grab anything that's on sale. Alright, thanks for watching.